Coming up, police say she took hot cooking oil and dumped it on her sleeping husband. Now he's dead and she's on the run. The FBI is on the case and we'll check in on the hunt to find her. Then breaking the case, her alleged killer is in court right now. We'll tell you why he won't stand trial. And a pervert peeping Tom admits to taping his neighbor's intimate moments. One of the women caught on video shares her stunning story. All that and more starts right now. a shower, getting dressed in the morning, or all things we do in the comfort and privacy of our own home. But for several California residents, these moments may never be the same again after they were caught on tape by their peeping Tom neighbor. Video voyeur William David Brown served only 120 days in jail, a sentence his victims are not satisfied with, and they've now filed a civil suit against him. Yvonne Goodwin is one of the victims you just saw on tape, and she joins us along with her attorney, Eric Trout. Um, Eric, I want, I want to start with you so I can get you to set this up a little bit. I understand that for about six years, this guy had all these cameras around his property, including one above his daughter's playhouse. I think we've got a picture of this, and the, the camera is, is circled there on the picture. And he's catching various neighbors in states of undress. Uh, and finally, a, another neighbor, Megan Rogers, uh, pointed this out to her brother, somebody he went over, checked it out. They got a warrant, got the cops in there, and found all sorts of tapes. Who is this guy? He's a very bizarre individual. He uh, and it actually goes back even further than that. Uh, there's videotape of him uh, several years before, actually back in 1997, uh, sitting in the bathtub of his own home, uh, where he had set up a camera in the bathtub to catch a roommate on film as she took a bath. That was all the way back in 1997, and there's film of of him actually in bra and panties sitting in the bathtub. Uh, positioning the camera so he could get her on film in the, in the right position that he wanted. And then you kind of step forward a few years and he starts filming, and, and back then was filming, all the neighbors that were backed up to the same cul-de-sac that he lives in uh, and filming them in private areas such as bathrooms and bedrooms and every chance he could get. I mean, there's 52 tapes and many, many hours of time spent but I, I understand, filming these people. I understand his wife notified the cops about five years ago going you know he's doing this weird stuff why didn't anything you know why didn't anybody go after him then well it's one of the reasons we're here and talking to you is we want to get the laws changed back then they didn't even have a penal code amendment that they have now that makes it a misdemeanor to peep with a camera or binoculars so there was nothing they could do back in 1999 and uh, when, when this was brought to the police's attention uh, but they didn't even tell the neighbors that they were on film, and it's one of the things that really disturbs my clients and myself and the reason why we're doing this. No kidding. Well, let me ask, ask Yvonne yeah. about this. Did you know this guy very well? Did, as a neighbor, had you come to know him? Well, yeah. I mean, his sister lives two doors down on my street. Of course, we live on a cul-de-sac, and he backs up to me. Um, to be quite frank, um, when his wife came back to him and moved in um, three, four years ago, um, my daughter befriended his daughter and my children played in that house. Wow. All right. You find out about this, yeah. uh, your, your other neighbor, Megan, you know, finds out the cameras. Also. What was your reaction? I mean, the, the invasion of personal privacy had to be horrific. I mean, originally when I knew of it and I heard that my children were on there, to be honest with you, as a parent, that was my main concern was what did he have of them? After watching the film and, and the relief of not having them visually on there, um, I think you went through every various state. You went through hate, anger, hurt, why me, um, what did I do? I mean, I think the hardest part was that their family and a whole, the grandmother, I mean, the mother of this William David Brown, the sister, I mean, his nephews go to school with my children. They've been in classes for the last three years with one or the other of them. So, I mean, my children played there. And, and then as all that settled, it, it came to realization that somebody had totally taken my life away and my privacy. 
to where I couldn't sleep upstairs. I couldn't sleep in an area that there was really no way anyone could have filmed my bathroom unless they went to great lengths to get into it. And it, it makes you realize that nobody's safe out there right now. With the advent of cameras and videotaping, people are gonna do what they're gonna do. And once that set in, I can honestly say um, it's gotten worse. I mean, we're going into two years of this and the reality sets deeper and deeper every day of what did indeed happen. Does he still, does he still live there? It, it, do you, you all still live in the same no. house, houses? No, he, no, he doesn't. That okay. was one of the goals was to, to get him out. And after he served his, during the point where he was serving jail time, his mother owns the home, uh, had renters come in and have uh, new occupants of the home. One of the scary things about Mr. Brown is we, we heard from good source, a good witness, that one of his intentions after he got out of jail was to actually go open a bed and breakfast somewhere in Colorado or Arizona. And unfortunately, the particular misdemeanor that he was charged under does not make him a registered sex offender. So we can't, you know, with law enforcement, follow him around like he should be followed around and, and kept track of. All right, in scary. addition to the civil suit, then um, what are you trying to do, Eric? Uh, have you gone to the legislature trying to uh, what make this a felony, make it a sex offense, sex crime? At a minimum, yes, and we're, we're pursuing that, but at a minimum, uh, make it a registered sex offense, and we can add an amendment to this uh, 647 in penal code, and that's what our hope is. We wanted them out, out of the neighborhood, obviously, but you don't want this to happen to other people in the state, and I understand the states are, uh, it's the states have, some states have strong laws in this regard, uh, in this type of instance, and some don't. But our hope is is that our legislature will or add the amendment that we want. Well, I, I certainly wish you luck because the technology has gotten past us on this one, and uh, I think this is obviously something that needs to be addressed legislatively. Eric Trout, Yvonne Goodman, thank you very much. Coming up next, to shoot or not to shoot? Well, states expand the way they define self-defense, so will it protect potential victims or leave